Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's official. It's that point in the season. It's the winter break. We don't have a lot of things to talk about. Um, that's the kind of negative side of the winter break. But, as always, I'll try and wheel out any old shite to try and keep us going over the next three weeks. Which means the return of the tried and trusted tier lists. <laughs> hey, tier lists. They're always handy. And I thought this one at this point in the season makes a little bit of sense. So why not? Why don't we sit down and rate every Celtic player's season thus far we're at the exact well we're not exact we're one game over but we're at the halfway point stage which is a sort of nice area to look at everybody and how they've performed in the opening half of the season everybody in a celtic jersey who's been good who's been bad and who do we expect more from in the last sort of six months of the season now i know i've already rated players this season i think it was like the first international or the second international break i sort of rated them up until that point but now we've had more game time we've had bigger games in europe we've had a cup that we've won um, we've had a lot more sort of pressured football and we've got to see the best out of some people so in saying that let's do the halfway point review which is certainly more sort of respectable than the halfway international sort of halfway but not break you know I'm, you know what i'm trying to say I, i'm making no sense at the end of the day it's a tier list um and i enjoy doing these so it gives us a bit of chat let's get right into it because i don't want this to last about 40 minutes so we've got a lot of players to run through uh so let's jump right into the tier list video also before we go any further jump down below hit the red subscribe button that would help and let's try and get as many subs on board before the clock strikes 12 on Friday night slash Saturday morning. Right then, here we go. We've got every player on screen, bar the absence of one. Uh, I've noticed a, an absence of Giacomakis, which is pretty similar to real life, an absence of Giacomakis. If I was to rate him, then he would be going in the, the bottom column. So let's run through the columns very, very quickly. We've got A, A-plus students, you know what I mean, the guys who are at the top and have been the best this season. B, they've been good, they're not quite up in A. C is sort of average. D, I really want more from them. We haven't maybe seen enough of them. God knows. And then finally, we've got to have it as a column. Get off me. It's get off me. I say column. These are actually rows. Get off me is the last one. Just go. Get off me. You know the video. That's the last one. So let's let's get into this. And we'll go in the order that whoever has created this has put it in. I don't know who's made this for me on the tier list website, tier maker. Thank you. Uh, you have been of great use and you've saved me a little bit of work. Right, uh, Tom Rogic uh, is a good opener. Uh, he kind of sets the bar for who's been good this season, who hasn't been good, I don't know. Because he's, he's certainly up in one of these two columns. Has he maybe been an A? He's, has he been a B? It's actually quite hard to decide for Tom Rogic. Because the way I look at it, he has been phenomenal in the terms of his resurgence, getting back into first team. Do you know what? For that alone, he's gone into A. He's gone into A. Because Tom Rogic was down and out. He was written off. People were happy to see him leave. Um, and we didn't really expect anything of him. Um, the fact is that he's came back in. He's made himself a regular starter. He's scored some big goals. He's looking like the Tom Rogic of old. And just, re just revitalised his whole career. And he deserves a massive amount of credit for that. There was a small period in the season where he did go a bit missing. But he's played some amount of football. He's back to playing 90 minutes. Something I never thought we'd see of Tom Rogic again. And he's doing it in style. He's been phenomenal this season. He's scored some incredible goals. I think it's only fair to put him up in a... My man, Vasilis... I mean, he's just got to go up there, hasn't he? He's just, he's got to be up at the top. <laughs> my hero, my king. Uh, yeah, that, that one appearance, I think he's made two competitive appearances. He's not had a lot to do. I'm not going to put him in get off me because that's just not fair. I'm going to put him in D um, because I think that, you know, he's probably not got much of a future at Celtic, so he could go down there. But, you know, in the one competitive game that I can remember being the last competitive game, he wasn't that bad. So, I'll just put him in D. I still think he's better than Scott Bain. Sorrow, yeah, I, I'm got, and we need more from him. I'm not going to say get off me. Get off me is sort of, it quite literally does what it says in the tin. It means get off me, go away, get, you know, let's maybe get rid of them. Um, Sorrow, for me, uh, is someone who definitely can be better, but I'm just, the patience is wearing thin. He's got very little chances, I think, left at Celtic. Players are coming into their own sort of game, and in and, and the midfield, it's becoming an area it's hard to get into. But I'll put him in D for now. He certainly isn't living up to the sort of hype I think Celtic fans, including myself, gave him when he came into the team last season. Um, but there's not been an improvement by him. That's the thing. He's just been the same. And if anything, he's went backwards. So I'm going to stick him down in D with Barkas. Connor Hassel. Get off me. <laughs> I think that's harsh, isn't it? Because, I mean, Connor Hazard hasn't really done anything. He's, in fact, he's done, like, nothing. I don't think he's made 
hit that in appearance. So it's quite harsh. But what else? What else can I say? He's simply not a Celtic quality, um, and maybe a lone move is best for him. Kyogo Furahashi. I mean, there's no question. I mean, there is no question. He's probably been over the course of the six months the most exciting player to watch in the Scottish Premiership. He has been a revelation to Celtic. He is currently writing himself into the Book of Greats. He won us the League Cup in the final. Um, and even through injuries here and there, he has stood tall um, and, and he's just came in and blew our world apart. He's just been amazing. He's just rocked everybody. And he deserves it so much to be up there. Uh, Keogh Furahashi, what a player, what a signing. Um, currently our top scorer still, I, I believe. And hopefully lots more to come from him. Hopefully that injury picked up against St. Johnson isn't that serious. David Turnbull, a lot of people, this might rub a lot of people the wrong way. I'm putting him in C. I don't think he's been overly good. I don't think he's been overly bad. I think he's been pretty average. Uh, and a lot of appearances this season were not seen the David Turnbull of last season which you know I don't want to talk about anything of last season but if I was to talk about anything at all it'll be Turnbull last season we've not got that from him he's been very quiet he's still kind of adjusting to this new role I know he's out with injury now as well trust me I love him and I think he's had a couple of really good appearances he had a hat trick early on in the season he's scored another couple here and there as well but I still think the best is yet to come this season of David Turnbull I expect a lot more of him in the latter half um, there is talk of him maybe being out for a little while with an injury, so God knows when we'll get to see him back in the team, but I don't know, Rogic has definitely been a level above him, and I feel like if I have Turnbull in here, uh, that would be offensive to Rogic, because I think he's been miles better, so that's why I'm putting Turnbull down and see. Well, this is just unfair, isn't it, Julian being in here, I, I mean, sh should I just leave him out? I'll put him in D just now, I mean... He's not played yet. He's not, he's not back from injury. He's still out. He has returned to training, thank God. Hopefully we see him post-winter break, but um, I don't have anything to say about Julian. I don't even feel like I should be including him on this list. Bolly, ball and golly. A, a very weird one. He's came into the team a couple of occasions. He came on against. He came in against Livingston when we were beat, but he was probably the best player in the park for Celtic. Probably says a lot about us that day. He also came in for another start at Celtic Park. I can't remember who it was against. Maybe Motherwell or something. And we've not. And they were just out of nowhere. There was no explanation why he was there. There was no explanation why he wasn't there the next week. Ball and golly is someone whose future is very uncertain at Celtic. I'm going to put him in D because he's not exactly done anything to deserve me saying, well, get off me. He's just not getting any chances. D seems suitable for Ball and golly, but I would imagine that his days at Celtic aren't going to last much longer. Michael Mikey Johnson. <sighs> yeah, I need to put him in there. Look, if you've been watching me long enough... Never been a massive fan of Mikey Johnson. I don't think that he's done himself any favours this season with the chances he's been given. He's been given chance after chance recently and he hasn't stepped up. I simply don't believe he's Celtic quality. Maybe we ship him out on loan for this six months. Hopefully he comes back as a player who can offer us something uh, in the future. But right now, Mikey Johnson is not good enough to play for Celtic. And I, I really want him to be. Don't get me wrong. I really want him to succeed. But it's just every... You know, how long can we say that for? For me, he goes in there. Get off me. Josip Juranovic, I am putting up into B. I think he's been a fantastic signing. Um, I think it really, really good. There's still some things he has to iron out about his game. But one thing about Juranovic is the, the job that he's been asked to do since coming in. He was signed as a right back. He's not played as a right back at all, basically. Um, he's been playing at left back. He's been playing at left mid. He's been playing at right mid. He's been all over the place and he's done all of those jobs really, really well. The reason he's probably not up in A is because I still think there's a lot to go for him. If you remember his penalty against Leverkusen, and that's the standout for me, especially being there in the ground. But, you know, there's still a lot for him to do. I feel sometimes he's very sloppy with his passing and sometimes he gives it away too easily. But, and maybe defensively, he still has a lot more to show us. But going forward, he's fantastic. He's, his crossing is brilliant. We've seen him on set pieces. He looks good too. I've really enjoyed the signing of Josip Juranovic. And I think that by the end of the season, we'll probably see him up here in A. But for now, I'm going to stick him in B. James Forrest, let's... Let's just be honest about it. He's down there. Um, very unlucky. Not his fault that a lot of these injuries have been piling up on him and it's been keeping him from playing regular football. But the chances that he has had so far since playing for Celtic this season, he's not impressed me. Um, and it's worrying because obviously James Forrest is getting on a bit. He's 30, 31 years old, I think. Um, he's getting a little bit older. How lot much longer has he got as a, a starter at Celtic? Never mind even, you know, this this could be the start of the kind of 
we'll see this sort of edging out of Forrest and the team if he doesn't come back and have an impact. He's not a player who Ange Postecoglou bought or signed or anything like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard one for Forrest. And I feel bad for him, but he hasn't in present. It's not so much down to him. It's probably more down to injuries hindering him. And it's been a struggle coming back into the team. The intensity as well when he's missed out for so long. But that be, that being said, it, it, it pretty much summarises why he's in this this role for me. Trying to be really fair and trying to put like the top, the creme de la creme in A. You're only getting an A if you have been... And, and Cameron Carter-Vickers can arguably be an A because I think he's been probably the best centre-half in Scotland this season. Celtic, ultimately, Celtic have the best defensive record in the league. They've kept the most clean sheets, I think, as well. Um, I'm not too sure on that one. I, I probably need to fact check that. But he's been he's been the standout of the two. I, I am a bigger Carol Starfield fan, and I want Carol Starfield to succeed. And so I want Carl Vickers to succeed. But I, I'm a bigger Carol Starfield fan. But I think I can honestly admit that Carter Vickers has been the better of the two, and he's been the best centre half at the club this season. He looks uh, fantastic. He looks so comfortable. He's been solid defensively. He's been brilliant in Angie's system of playing out. Do you know what? He's gone in at A. Why should they not go in at A? We talk about scoring goals and we score about and we talk about assists and we talk about creativity. But sometimes you need to talk about the guys who are keeping the ball out of the net and the defensive job they're doing. And this guy has been fantastic for us this season. So I'm going to stick him up in A. I really like Carter Vickers and I think it's fair. And talk about his partner. As much as I love him, I'm going to put him in C for now. I, I would love to put him up here. And a few weeks ago, if you asked me, he probably would have been up here in B. Um, but he has started making a few mistakes again. He has looked a little bit ropey. I think there's that nervousness still there for him. But Carl Starfield is someone who has helped Celtic. He's improving the Celtic defence. Ultimately, defensively, We've, as I've spoken about the record, it's been the best in the country um, across all top four, all top four divisions. So he has been brilliant, and he'll definitely go up by the end of the season, I reckon. But right now, I'm going to keep him and see. Now, if you asked me before St. Johnson, James McCarthy would have definitely been in and get off me. I, I'm going to move him up to D for now because he's only had one good game for Celtic. That's all the expla uh, explanation I need. He's still been a very weird signing, this four-year contract. I'm hoping that along with that good performance against St. Johnson, we see more of that as he moves forward as a player at Celtic. Uh, but for now, I think D is fair because he's, I mean, he's certainly not been better than anybody above him or on par with anybody above him. Um, there's still an argument. He could be down here, but I'll be fair. I'll be nice and I'll give him his chance and I'll put him in D. I've got to be honest, Big Beton's up here. He's into the B for me. He's been absolutely tremendous this season. Take away Michelin's, um and the early season mistake that that was, and, and we were all calling for him to be sold. He's came back into the centre of midfield, and he showed why he was such a good player in the midfield all those years ago at Celtic. Beaton has been calm, cool, collected, and he's filled in when needed, when McGregor's been injured, when Turnbull's been injured, when Rogic has been injured, and he's done nothing really wrong, I think. There's been a couple of wee mistakes here and there, but he's certainly backed his best, I think, um, in the middle of the park, rather than being used as a centre-back. I've been so impressed with his with his resurgence, just like, you know, Tom Rogic as well, um, and I think it's only fair to put him up there. He's been better than Turnbull for me this season. I really do believe that. But he's pal, Eliel Abada, another one that goes up into B. Now, I know Abada splits a lot of opinion. I think a lot of people are really frustrated with him. But 10 goals, 8 assists, uh, I believe that's the stats. Contr contributed to 18 goals thus far this season. At the age of 20 years old, he's been fantastic. Um, and I know that there was that kind of period where he wasn't really up to much. And it was quite frustrating as a player. You can't ignore the, the goals he's chipped into and how big they've been. Um... And, and all competitions. So for me, Abada goes up into there for being such a young guy and, and coming in, kind of as, he was kind of the first guy, wasn't he, that, that Ange brought into this team. You know, if you remember back to Mitchell and Abada played and scored that day, that was Ange's sort of first competitive game and Abada was there from the very start. He's been in the team from start to finish, uh, start to this point so far and he's been really reliable. He's got to go in there for me. McGregor, if, and no, I mean, he's the best player in the country, isn't he? It, it, McGregor's just fantastic captain. He's just, fantastic honestly fitting into that armband like a prime scott brown brilliant love him quality technical ability is amazing just i can't rave enough about Callum mcgregor he deserves to be above everybody I, I, I he's been fantastic i don't know if he's been quite the best player this season but i still think he's the best player in this country um he's just phenomenal to watch i love him Callum mcgregor there you go son i'll be in a yeti get off me it's down there. He's not going to work at Celtic, is he? This, we've, we've gave him time. We've gave him patience. And 
I would love to see him pull through because he's someone that I advocated to sign for so long. If you remember back to the summer of the 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 the, the season before and. I was so buzzing that we were linked with him and I was buzzing that we could sign him and then we did sign him I was even more buzzing then he got off to a flyer and I was seeing him score 20 goals and it's just not worked since and I don't think it's going to work for a Yeti um, he's injured just now of course but I don't see much of a future and quite frankly he's had chance after chance he's no quite what I'm just looking for I think get off me oh, man give him his own column give him, a, give him a decent column he's gone up in A what a signing and I, I just love how he's proved me an absolute dafty and people will be laughing at me for saying so much shit about him when we were linked with him and how I didn't want him to sign for Celtic because he's doing so well and I couldn't be happier because he's my favourite player in the team at the moment. Uh, I love Joe Hart, I've took an absolute admiration to him and he's just decent isn't he? Greg Taylor is such a, a weird one, I, I, he's between C or D for me. I think it's harsh probably put him in C. I think he's been better than everybody below me here. So I'm going to put him in C, but we need a lot better. We really do. And that, that's all I'm going to leave it at for Greg Taylor, I think. Right, same again. Uh, or a, a giddy one competitive appearance. So I'm not going to be overly harsh on him. Very raw still. A long way to go, but we don't know when we'll see him next. So, what what else am I meant to say about Origidi? Uh, is there anybody else like that? No, I think well, everybody else has got quite a fair rating, I think. Stevie, Stevie Welsh. Uh, I'm, I'm very low down in the camera, aren't I? Uh, Stevie Welsh, I am going to put in... I think he's a C. I think I'll put him in a C. Started the season not so great. Came on to a bit more of a game when we've needed him. He's been reliable. And I'm, 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 I'm glad that he's looking more confident as a Celtic player because I still thought for a long time he was way off the mark. He maybe needed another loan move. Maybe he just wasn't Celtic quality. But he stood tall uh, when Starfield was injured. Um, he came into the team and he done really well. Because I remember when he played against Livingston, I thought he was mince. But he got better as, as time has gone on. I still think he's got a long way to go. See, I think it's fair. I'll put Stephen Welsh in there. Jota, baby, I know he's injured, but I love him, I, I love him, I love you, I love him, he is just top tier, great, I mean, I know I say McGregor's the best player in the country, and I, I do believe he is, but Jota has the potential to be just one of the top players this country's seen in the last 10, 20 years, he's just a quality footballer, like, you know, when he's at his best, he's a level above this league, he should probably be playing down in England, uh, to be quite honest, but let's hope he stays at Celtic for longer, let's hope he's back fit soon, and let's hope he's ready to play against Rangers, but that boy is special, and he's been absolutely tremendous when he's played for Celtic, now I know the injury could maybe argue to bring him down here, but you can't, can't ignore how good a player he's actually been, so he's up there for me. Montgomery's a weird one, because I, I I want to see him get loaned out or something, so that would maybe suggest put him and get off me, but I think that's very harsh for a boy so young, and uh, still so, such a long way to go in terms of development, so I'll put him in D as well, um, but I must admit, we, he needs a, a big a big improvement to be a Celtic regular, I think, to be a first-team player, a reliable first-team player, we need to see a significant improvement in his ability, maybe via loan move or just just through his own development, we need that to happen, because, you know, give him another couple of years and he's easily down here, but I think, you know, hopefully the trajectory is only up for Montgomery, three, two, one, I'm just, I'm just putting him in there, I'm just, nah, can't be bothered explaining it, <laughs> Get off me. can't believe that this day has come, I honestly cannot fucking believe this day has come, Anthony Ralston, arguably, has been our best player this season, um, <laughs> how has it happened, I, I don't know, I don't know, but I absolutely love it, and he deserves nothing less than being up here with the, with the top guy, the top guys, he's been phenomenal this season, and I don't need to explain that any more than I have done over recent weeks, especially if you go back and watch that Ross County last minute winner review, I, I cannot describe it any better than that night, and how I spoke about him that night, what an improvement, what, I mean, most improved player of the year has already been won, and it's him, but he's up there, he deserves to be there, and fair fucking play to him. And finally, the last player, Liam Scales, Scalesy, I'm putting him into section C, uh, because I've been quite impressed with him um, the last few games he's played, still obviously, I think he's been pretty much the same kind of way I described, like, I don't know, Taylor and, and Turnbull, he's not been overly good, he's not been overly bad, I think right in the middle is fair, and that's what I think is a fair rating, for all of the Celtic players thus far this season, there you go, that's my list, that is my tier list of player seasons thus far, let me know what you think in the comments below, let me know what you agree with and what you disagree with, I think it's a pretty fair sort of 
um, judgment of how everyone has been. But obviously, everybody has a different opinion and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. So let me know what you think and what you would change in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.